my grandmother and I in particular, we were very, very, very close. And when I was 16 years old, it's the age that you have to be in order to legally walk the floors in Vegas. You can't gamble yet, but you can actually be there. And and my grandmother was so excited because she just loved Vegas. She would she would her cap would be twenty dollars, so she would not spend more than twenty dollars there during the entire trip. And she would um, use it all uh, just in the nickel slot. So she would just yeah she would just get a big couple of nickels and she would play with it. And um, and and I think it sort of symbolized. I think the whole notion of gambling overall symbolized sort of the industry that they had been in because they were they were actors and um and it's just a really kind of crazy unwieldy uncertain industry um and uh and so basically what happened was i i went with them and my grandmother was playing the slot machine and she was losing and yet she was still playing <laughs> and um she just out of nowhere she i think she had the hunch that i wanted to be an actor and she said to me, do you know how many auditions the average working actor needs to go on typically before booking a job? And this is the average for, for people who are paying their SAG dues. So they're making their living as actors. And I guessed one in 10. And she said to me, no, it's 64. One in 64 auditions. And... It was just a, a this clarifying moment for me to have an understanding of what the odds statistically were. It didn't – I feel like in creative businesses, there's so much romance. It's like this person did this one thing and then they skyrocketed to just never-ending success. Yes. Or, you know, it's – it's. Um, they did it within a year. They did it within three months. It's just – These this, unicorn stories. Yes, unicorn stories. Yep. And And – Knowing the statistics is so grounding, and um, so when I when I later I started auditioning, um, and incidentally, my grandmother had retired for uh, from acting during the child rearing years with my with my dad and my uncle, and and as the grandkids were being born, and she actually went back into acting. Um, in her sixties, love that I know, <laughs> and um, and she. Uh, this is how determined she was. She actually – she was counting the number of, of auditions she was going on and she got up to 100 without booking a job. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to start the count over at one and then and then we'll see if I make it to 64. And then by 64, she did actually book a job. And then she had this tremendous hot streak for the last 10 years of her life. Um, so when I started auditioning after kind of, you know – Un having an understanding of these odds and and being very inspired by her stick to itness, um, I just started counting. So one audition, two auditions, and I promised myself I wasn't going to get upset if I didn't book something um, before sixty four auditions because that would be deluded thinking. Because the reality is, is that's the average, and that's the average for a working actor. For a working, and actor, you were just starting a successful out, successful actor. Yes, and yeah. I actually said to myself, also, I was like, you know, and I think I, I'll do the same as my grandma. I'll get up to a hundred, and um, then start over again. And then, you know, if I go two hundred auditions without anything, I might, I might look around for some feedback and see what I could maybe do differently. Um, and it was, I believe. The 48th audition for me was – I got that job. Mm -hmm. And um, my agent then, who is still my agent today, so we've worked together for 16 years, um, she later asked me because it was oh, way over a year. And she said, how did you not quit? She was like, I don't want to offend you with this question. But she said, I was really getting worried. And most actors quit long before you did. And I told her that story with my grandmother. And um, and she went, whoa, yeah, that's true. I wish more artists knew that. I wish more creative people un understood that because then they wouldn't be so hard on themselves. Yes. And when you're hard on yourself, unreasonably so, you just are going to – things are going to start kind of falling apart, you know, just something in your heart just – it can feel so sinking if you feel like you're the only one who's being rejected this much.